Like any free-to-play game, Lord of the Rings Rise to War operates on a microtransaction model, meaning that players willing to spend money on the game can get some distinct advantages. That being said, the game does well to make pay-to-play models not essential, so you can have success in Rise to War as a free-to-play player. In this video, I'm going to investigate the various ways you can maximise your efficiency to make the most of your experience of Lord of the Rings Rise to War as a free-to-play player. I hope you enjoy. So if starting you as a free-to-play player, you need to try and make sure you're as efficient as possible right from the beginning. And that starts immediately from when you choose your first faction. When you choose your first faction, in the initial tutorial, you are given your first two commanders. And these two commanders can have a huge bearing on your success at the beginning of the game. The reason for this is that not every faction is given the same commander. So therefore, it's wise at the beginning to select a faction which will give you a strong commander which will form the base of your free-to-play experience. Of course, this is only if you're joining as a fresh player, not joining with an existing community, as if you're joining with an existing community, you likely already have a pre-picked faction. But if you're joining on your own, try and pick a faction which has the best starting commander. If playing on the good side, I would recommend choosing either Rohan or Erebor. The reason for this is with Rohan, you will get Eowyn as your starting commander, who's a very strong mounted cavalry commander and continues to be good all the way through to late seasons. Similarly with Erebor, you get Dwalin, who's the Dwarven uh, might-based commander. Again, can be very good in later seasons. On top of this, of course, you can't guarantee it for every single server, but in season ones, both of these factions tend to be highly populated, so you have a good chance of having a successful season and can build up friendships within the community there. If playing on the evil side, I would recommend choosing either Mordor to get the commander Gorbag, who uses orcish units, or to a slightly lesser extent, Rune, who uses the commander Khaldun and evil men units. Whilst at lower respect levels, Khaldun is the better commander, Rune in Season 1 tends to be less populated, so I'd more recommend going for Mordor and getting Gorbag, who in later seasons becomes a phenomenal commander. And Mordor is a very popular pick in the first season. Once you do this and go through your initial tutorials, you'll drop into the map and you'll note that you get the respect for these commanders so you have them immediately fully unlocked with a good amount of respect. If you were to choose another faction and decide you wanted to get these commanders, you'd have to use valuable resources to unlock them, which would therefore be wasteful. And as resources are very limited for free to play players, this is very inefficient. So you want to make sure you're choosing the commander that you want to use right from the beginning. So you've logged in, set up your account and you have your first commander. Now we're going to look at ways that you can maximize and get as much of the premium currencies, uh, mathems and gems as quickly as possible as well as ways to get additional equipment just to get your account properly started. The first thing to do is to head to the store icon in the top right, head down to daily discount and click on the free daily surprise. By clicking this, you can sometimes get gold, you can get resources, but every now and again, you can also get a free 50 gems. Make sure you do this every single day as those gems and resources and gold over time will add up. The next thing to do is just simply to log in every day. Just for logging in for the first few days, the game will reward you with a lot of gems, gear and mathems, particularly during the first week. To claim those, just head to the event tab, just below the store tab, and you'll see on the journey begins, you get rewards for each day that you log in, starting with a couple of speed up items, but building up to mathems, gems, and even additional equipment and an elven hammer. Once you've claimed this from the Journey Begins tab, if you scroll down the rest of the events, you'll see there's a ton of other ways to earn free mathems, equipment, and other gem rewards. Some of these ways are easier than others. For example, Awakened Power requires you as an individual player to be one of the top players in the server for power rankings by the end of the timer, or be in one of the top fellowships on the server. This may be easier said than done, of course. However, the other rewards, such as Valiant Hearts and Power of the Ring, are extremely doable for free-to-play players. All you have to do is continue playing the game, increase your commander levels, and increase your ring power level by taking tile. This then again will reward you with valuable resources you can use to further your account. 
make sure you keep an eye on this events menu as new events regularly pop up, giving you even more opportunity and more ways to pick up additional rewards. For example, every weekend there's an event that starts called Heart of the Hero, which requires you to hit certain bosses on high power tiles and rewards you for doing so with up to 400 additional gems and a Matham token. So it's worth doing every single weekend. You just have to keep an eye on when the event starts and make sure it's done before expiry. The next thing you're going to want to look to do right from the beginning of Logon is to go into the community pages accessed by the event menu and you'll see that for following or liking all of these various community pages, uh, four of them in total, you'll gain 100 gems for each, so 400 gems in total, which you get for doing basically nothing and are just free and available for you to take. Similarly, you can access an additional 200 gems by just going into your settings, clicking on the icon next to your player name and filling in the necessary details to be a NetEase Gamer Premium Member. This again costs you nothing at all and rewards you with 200 additional gems. The next place to look for additional free rewards is just to take a look into the Season Pass. Now, of course, you don't have to buy the Premium Season Pass there are rewards for free to play players all along here, as you can see, including gems, speed ups, respect items, and Matham vouchers. These rewards are unlocked by completing various daily and weekly challenges. As a free to play player, you want to make sure that you complete these challenges whenever they become available as soon as possible so that you can get to the end of your season pass and get as many rewards as possible. As you can see in season one, there is an absolute ton of rewards available including powerful equipment, so this will be a huge boon to your account. Another way to quickly pick up 500 gems is after you've played for a few hours, you'll be sent in your mailbox a survey by NetEase Games just to review some of the game and game contents. If you fill this out, they'll send you 500 gems as soon as you finish, so definitely make sure to do that as it's quite quick and easy to do. My last recommended way of gaining resources as a free-to-play player is to make sure to go into your tavern and look at the Red Book of Westmarch. The Red Book of Westmarch in your first season will include several chapters of which one unlocks per day. You want to make sure to do these as quickly as possible as completing these again gives you valuable resources, gems and equipment, again for free without any pay requirement at all. If you're in later seasons this Red Book has been replaced uh, with every few days you get an opportunity to complete a, a challenge using one of your commanders. If you can make your way through this challenge you are rewarded with 200 gems and a Matham token. So again it's always worth doing whenever it pops up and make sure to not forget and miss that timer or else you're costing yourself the opportunity for more free rewards. So you've now gained a load of rewards and you have a big stack of gems and Matham tokens burning a hole in your pocket. So what is the best way to efficiently make use of these resources to make sure you get the most value in the long run? First up, I'll start with a load of the things that I think you should not do so you don't waste your gems on things that will not further your account. First up, do not waste this on speed ups like speeding up heals for your troops or building for your keep. Whilst these speed ups might appear tempting as they'll save you time, Every season this will reset, so in the long run you're costing yourself gems which could be more equipment to then get stronger in the long run. Essentially this will snowball and over time you'll be losing out on a huge amount of additional equipment. Similarly, once you unlock the market, it might be tempting to hit that refresh button when you're only a little bit of resource off the next uh, building, for example. However, I'd recommend not doing this as again those 50 gems will add up every single time that you hit the refresh. Next up, you have the option on your gold levy to double it every time you claim gold. Again, do not spend the 100 gems doubling this gold levy. It all resets at the end of the season, so it's a massive, massive waste. And last but not least, I'd recommend never spending your gems on a fully priced chest open. I'll go through this a little bit more in a moment. So now we've looked at what you shouldn't do with your gems, shall we take a closer look at what I think you should do with your gems? First up, if you go to the Matham store, you'll see an option called either Rare Treasures if you're playing on the good side, or Accursed Artifacts if on the evil side. If you click into this, you'll see there's an option to open a chest for free once per day. On top of this, 
there's also an option to use a half price 200 gems to buy another chest. I definitely recommend doing this every single day if you can afford it with your gems to do the free opening and the half price free opening. This is the reason why I say it's never worth buying a Mavum chest with the full price of 400 gems. Because doing so, therefore you're paying 400 gems for a chest, whereas if you just waited till the next day, you could open two chests at 200 gems each. So it's better to just be patient and let your gems go longer over the long run, so therefore you'll get double the amount of equipment. Next up, you'll hit a point in your storyline where you unlock tips in your tavern. Tips grant you experience, but more importantly, either equipment chances or respect for certain commanders. With this, you get four tips per day, refreshing again at the same time the chest resets. But on top of this, you also get an option in the tavern to reset these tips for 200 gems. Again, if you can afford to do so, I would recommend doing this every day as getting a chance, one chance for a piece of equipment on top of the chance for random respect for three different commanders is definitely more than you would get for 200 gems in a single chest. So these tips are definitely where I'd recommend spending your gems. But I would not recommend doing the second refresh, which costs double at 400 gems. Just try and do the one refresh per day if you can keep your gem flow from rewards high enough to keep doing so. This way, each day, you end up with a nice flow of equipment from the two chests and also respect coming in from the eight or so tips that you get so your account quite, account quite quickly will stock up on respect and equipment. In the long run this will massively benefit you. So now that I've covered gems now I'm going to take a look into which chests I recommend that you pull with the Madam coins you're getting from your rewards. In season one you'll have an additional chest right from the beginning so for example good side is called fellowship of the ring and gives you an opportunity to unlock every time you open five of these chests you'll get three additional respect items for Gandalf the Grey. Evil side will have a similar chest but instead will unlock the commander Lurts. So for the Gandalf the Grey chest I would always recommend pushing your Mathams into this chest as you'll have the chance of unlocking the invitation for Gandalf the Grey but you'll also keep building up his respect so even if you don't get his invitation you should be able to hard unlock him that way by spending the respect items you get through pulling this chest. Gandalf the Grey is a fantastic commander for both PvE and PvP and continues to be worth it even in later seasons so definitely pull from this chest. For evil however I do not think that you should invest in the chest to get Lurts. Whilst Lurts can be good in season 1 after getting to respect 3, his power level drops off significantly and he's very rarely used in later seasons as he is not a particularly powerful evil commander. So for good side, pull from Fellowship of the Ring, but for evil side, I would just pull from the regular Accursed Artifacts chest or if you have the patience, save up your gems for another event chest that comes up in the future. If you're not in season 1 and therefore you have various different chests, what I'd recommend doing is saving up your Mathams until you have a reasonable amount and then spending them all at once once you have a certain chest that comes out that has the commander's respect in it that you want to aim for. Sometimes also, during various events, you do get chests which allow you to choose which commanders you want to be put into the chests. These can be very useful as it can mean that you focus which respect items you get down to only those commanders which you are trying to unlock. So therefore I'd recommend spending your Mathem coins on these chests when they're available. So now that we've claimed rewards and opened these chests, what should we do with the items that we get from these chests? So first up, we're going to start with a discussion about commanders. As a free-to-play player, you want to make sure you're focusing on a very small number of commanders so that you can focus as much respect as possible into them. That way you end up with one, two or three very good commanders, depending on how far down the, the seasons you are, rather than a number of commanders with very low respect. One or two really good commanders is definitely better than five or six average ones. You could, of course, go for your favourite commanders lore-wise. but What I would recommend is that you pick one tier one, preferably your starting commander as you already have their invitation, one tier two and one tier three, to invest in slash aim for. Every other respect item that you get should be exchanged in the exchange for Madam vouchers 
and then you could use this exchange to get more respect items for the tier 3 of choice that you're trying to unlock. This should usually allow you to hard unlock a tier 3 within a season or so if you're disciplined with what you do with your respect items. To assist in this unlock, when you go into the Rare Treasures Mathem chest, make sure you click the wish list button and this will allow you to input the items that you wish to focus on and what this will do is this will increase the chance of you receiving these items and decrease the chance of other items. So for example, for the good side, if I was to focus on Dwalin, uh, let's say Gimli, and then say Dane, I could put these items in here and that would then increase the chance of these items being appearing when I open the chest. Anything else I then get, I would just dump straight into the exchange for Mathem vouchers. So which commanders do I recommend? Uh, for good side, your tier 1 again should be your starting commander, so Dwalin or Eowyn. Tier 2, there's lots of choice, but Gandalf the Grey is probably the best to focus, as of course you will already have got some of his respect through the Fellowship of the Ring. So just keep hard focusing him and getting his respect level up, as he helps in both PvE and PvP in every single season. Tier 3 rise, in my opinion, the best one to aim for is Gil Galad. For evil side, again, you should be looking at your starting commander, so Gorbag or Khaldun. Tier 2, there's a lot less choice. Mouth of Sauron is good, though I would personally recommend Gothmog, as he can be flexibly an excellent PvP commander and also help massively with siege damage. Tier 3 in evil, there's a lot of choice. Witch King is amazing PvE and great at PvP though slightly easy to counter. Sauron is probably better PvP, but worse PvE. And Sunind isn't available until Season 2, so if you're just starting, probably isn't worth aiming for, as you'd have to wait an entire season and save your respect vouchers, but she's similarly very good at PvP. Personally, I'd recommend going for the Witch King, though again, you couldn't go wrong with aiming for Sauron. If whilst pulling chests, you do get lucky and you get an invitation, Make sure to check if the commander is worth using before investing to get their respect up so that you don't waste your precious resources. For example, if you get, say, the invitation for Thranduil, don't start funneling all of your respect items into him just to then find out that he's a really poor commander and you've wasted all of these respect items when you could have continued focusing Gil-galad and got a really top-tier commander unlocked by that point. The best way to check if a commander is worth using is either to look at the various YouTube resources available. You know, there's a lot of tier lists and guides which will detail how good a commander can be. Or simply to also join Discord communities and ask the community there what they think about certain commanders and whether they're worth investing in. So last up, we're now also going to look at the equipment that you get from the various chests and rewards. Similar to commanders, it is best to focus on a small amount of gear and make it as good as possible before moving on to the next piece. One well-kitted commander is better than three poorly kitted, so focus gear onto your main or best commander, which to begin with will likely be your tier 1. It's worth noting also that fully strengthened blue gear is better than barely strengthened gold or purple gear, so do not be afraid to use 4 star blue gear. It can serve you well, particularly in the early seasons. For purple and gold gear, I'd recommend focusing on one piece of gold, one piece of purple gear for each of the equipment classes, so headgear, armour, weapon and accessory. Only one and focus all the rest into strengthening and refining these one pieces in each category. That way, within a season or so, you should have an excellent, well-strengthened set of equipment for one commander. Once this is then all maximised, you can look into starting a second piece. But don't be tempted to spread this around and end up with loads of really poor pieces of gear, because you'll quite quickly find that stronger commanders from pay-to-win players will overwhelm you. Lastly, the one thing to never do, and make sure you never, never do, is in the tavern, with the tavern trader, you do have the option to sell equipment for gold. I'd recommend only doing this with green gear, as particularly at the beginning, blue gear can be very important to you, as I said, as it can be particularly strong against you know, unupgraded purple gear. But what you should never ever do is sell purple or gold gear to this here trader, no matter how badly you think you need the gold. 
make sure you save this equipment as it will be needed for strengthening later on. And with that, that's everything I'd like to cover in my free to play guide. If you have enjoyed, please consider dropping a like and please subscribe. I do regularly post Rise to War content that hopefully should be very informative to you. If you do choose to do that, I really hope to see you on the next one.